Good morning, everyone. Mr. Zatola here. Just wanted to do a quick run through on the geologic dating notes. Um, just a quick note. This is notes 16, uh, as you see it in your Google Classroom. Uh, you're using these notes to fill in information uh, on our notes packet, fill in a little fun joke here. Um, so we're dating rocks. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, this is the breakdown of all geologic time. Uh, so what you really have here are the longest periods of time are the eons. <clears throat> we break the eons down into eras and there's a reason they're broken up here and here. Uh, essentially you have, uh, mass extinctions breaking them down. Uh, so like for example, the end of the Mesozoic right here is the dinosaur extinction. All right. The, uh, and then we break it down into periods, uh, because we could, see more information there <clears throat> and finally we have epochs um for all of this stuff here down here <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> epochs are broken up into early middle and late uh as you notice here we have a lot more specific uh names that's because that is recent geologic time everything in the cenozoic is still around there hasn't been a major uh, event that has caused a major change so we can when we look at fossils or rock evidence we can actually put some information to it uh, so we can be much more specific all right so we move on so where did this information come from how do we know these numbers okay so how do we know these numbers well ultimately uh, this information comes from dating of the rocks uh, using two different uh, two different styles so you have absolute dating okay absolute dating is an exact age okay like uh, when you ask a little kid how old they are and they say they're seven and three months and 14 days okay um, the thing is, uh, this only works with igneous and metamorphic rocks. And in your notes packet, there is a Y. Well, why? The Y is because sedimentary rocks are made of many other rocks. So you have to remember that, that sedimentary rocks are made of other rocks. So... Right. Sedimentary rocks are made of many other rocks, okay? Um, and that's absolute dating. And we can do that uh, with radioactive decay. We look actually at radioactive isotopes inside the rock, and we can see how long they've been in existence. Uh, the other kind of, of dating we do is relative dating. And this is more like um, how you would look at me and say I'm old. And I would look at you and say you're young, but we have not given any specific ages. Okay, we do that looking at, um, we compare rock types and fossils um, to other rock types and other fossils in different areas. And we can determine if something is older or younger. Um, what's important here is this works with all rock types, uh, including sedimentary rocks. Okay, so just going to slide down to the next slide. So what is radioactive decay? Well, radioactive decay is when rocks are made of minerals, which are made of elements, which are made of atoms. And some of these atoms contain extra neutrons in their nucleus, okay? Anything that contains extra neutrons in the nucleus is called an isotope. And an isotope does not like uh, where it's at. It is unstable. So isotopes are unstable and they want to become stable. So what happens is over time, they change. They change from a parent isotope into a daughter isotope. So from an unstable parent to a stable daughter isotope uh, by losing neutrons. And that part we're not really going to go too far into since it's uh, chemistry and physics based. But what you have to remember is that uh, we go from unstable to stable from daughter to 
sorry, from parent to daughter, okay? And this is, the process is radioactive decay. And you see we have some specific highlights here. Um, each decays at a definite constant rate. So we know how long it takes to break down, all right? We do this by call, measuring something called a half-life, all right? In a half-life, the amount of time it takes half, that's the key here, of the atom uh, in the sample to decay. So in one half-life, how much is left? Well, it'd be one half. But after two half-lives, how much is left? It would be one quarter. And three, one eighth. So really it'd be 50% for one half-life. 25% for two half-lives. And we just break it back down in half. It'd be 12.5% for three half-lives. And we're going to do some more work with those numbers. Okay, so this is a half-life decay curve. Uh, <clears throat> we have a better way of doing it. We have a whole chart set up that I'm going to uh, make a video about on how to do the half-lives for not only percent but also mass of an ice uh, of a radioactive uh, isotope. Um, but in this chart, <clears throat> it's important to see here we start out with one whole, or you could say one hundred percent. So you always start with a hundred percent of the parent, which is the yellow, uh, and that's at zero half lives. Okay, that's number of half lives down here. So after one half life, so here we are at one. We have, right, half or 50%. 50% of the daughter, 50% of the parent, right, which makes 100 total. After two half lives, we have 25% of the parent, 75% of the daughter. So notice, always adding up to 100. Uh, and we can go further. 25 and a half is 12.5. 12 12.5 and a half is 6.75. And just goes down and down and down. Um, it never hits zero. So things that are really important to remember is that the decay rate is constant and unchanging. All right. If it tells you it takes 10 days to decay, it will always take 10 days to decay. If it tells you it takes uh, two years to decay, it will take two years to decay. Really, what we're going to be looking at is our isotopes take things like 11,000, uh, or sorry, my fault, uh, take things like uh, 5,700 years to decay and 1.3 million years to decay and 4.5 million years to decay and 4.9 billion years to decay. So uh, we're only going to be looking at four specific isotopes um, and this can't ever be stopped, cannot be stopped, it cannot be sped up, it cannot be slowed down, it cannot be changed, all right, heating crush does not do anything. There's only one thing, we can reset the isotope if we melt or recrystallize the rock. So if it's melting and recrystallizing, it is igneous, um, and you could even say metamorphic rocks can also be reset because they can be re recrystallized, right? So sedimentary rocks, uh, we're not going to use this for because every particle in a sedimentary rock could be from a different rock and from a different age. So we would never use this technique, okay? We use fossils to date rocks. Uh, we use specific historic uh, trace parts like we find bones, shells, tracks, footprints, leaves, bugs, whatever's left over from uh, a fossil can help us determine how old the rock is or the rock layer that the fossil is in. Now, this is where sedimentary rocks come in. You don't find many fossils in igneous or, or metamorphic rocks because they get destroyed through the process of making those rocks. But sedimentary rocks that lay down on nice flat layers in the bottom of the ocean or in the bottom of a deep uh, or large water body, well, those fossils get left behind. Um, and we'll talk about the parts of fossils because we have soft parts and hard parts of the fossils that get left behind. But really, when you talk about soft parts, you're talking about exoskeletons and hard parts are obvious. Bones, shells, teeth, um, uh, 
soft parts can also be um, things like what's left over in impressions. Uh, footprints are a big one. If it's a footprint or a, a movement print, we can determine that the animal lived then, obviously. Um, up here, this thing called an index fossil. You need to know this. Index fossils are fossils that lived for a brief period of time and over a large area. So um, we're going to talk about index fossils when we look at some of our reference tables, but I'll give you a great example. Humans. Humans are a phenomenal index fossil. Uh, we have not lived very long. We've only been around for a few uh, thousand years, and we live everywhere on this planet. So we are a great index fossil. And uh, when the end of the Cenozoic happens, I'm not sure when that will be, and humans are extinct, uh, whatever's left, we'll always be able to look back and tell what we were doing and where we lived. So let's take a look at this picture. This is the Grand Canyon. And notice you see layers that connect through these different areas of the Grand Canyon. All right, these are correlated, all right? These layers were once one layer. Oh, sorry. Didn't want to write a T there. Correlation, all right? They're connecting these rocks that were once one rock layer. Um, it's easy to see in this picture, but we could do this over millions uh, or sorry, we can do this over hundreds of miles. Um, famous parks in the United States are Bryce Park, Zion National Park, and of course Grand Canyon. They all have the same rock layers, but they are about 300 miles apart. So we can see a correlation between these. Okay, so let's talk quickly about relative dating, and you're going to have some videos to watch on this. A couple laws you have to remember. Law of superposition tells me that... Uh, the rock layers were laid down one on top of the other. So we always assume that the oldest is at the bottom. And the youngest is at the top. All right. We will never look at a, the item where we are overturning rock layers. So we can't determine that they have been uh, oldest at the bottom, youngest at the top. So what you when you look at this class, you're only going to get this situation. Um, we do have to understand there's something called a cross-cutting relationship. Uh, I say this all the time. When you make a sandwich, and try not to argue with me about this, you build it. Bread, you put your maybe condiment, maybe your sandwich meat, maybe your lettuce and tomato, maybe your cheese, and maybe uh, your other piece of bread on top, um, and then you cut it. So what I'm trying to say is um, the old layer, all right, this was the first one laid down, this was the second one laid down, this is the third one laid down, the fourth one laid down, the fifth one laid down, and then this intrusion came in, okay, that was the sixth layer to be put down, then the intrusion happened. So uh, rock layers cut by another rock layer uh, must be younger. So the rock layer that is cutting through uh, in this example, it's the granite dike cutting through those other layers. It is the youngest. And we'll do more on that. So that's just a quick rundown of some relative dating methods and and dating rocks uh, using radioactive dating and or um, relative dating like correlation methods. So uh, I'll be doing a short video on radioactive uh, uh, dating. And as well, we'll start doing some videos on... Uh, relative dating methods okay uh keep checking google classroom hope everyone's safe uh really hope to see you all soon all right have a great one everyone